Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about my career mistakes in cybersecurity. And these will be in no particular order, but just in terms of background. Hi, my name is Sandra, and I've currently been working in cybersecurity as a security analyst for about three years in the entire span of my career. And the first thing I wanted to talk to you about today is trying to deal with issues or problems by yourself. So there were a lot of times when different security events came up or different requests came up and maybe I was the first person to know about it somehow. I think especially in cybersecurity when there's so many things around alert fatigue with your entire team or your manager where maybe there's always a bunch of security events and requests coming in that you really get numb a little bit to the types of requests that come in and what you may be looking for and, and oftentimes your team is under stress. So in my early career when I thought about it that way, I would always take these problems and try to run with it by my Myself, but that is honestly not the best solution to go about it especially when it comes to security events or requests that may be urgent or may have some kind of pressing deadline which oftentimes security events do have those things so in the beginning of my career maybe I would take some things and just let it sit and not really know what to do with it but my team is busy so I don't want to reach out to them and tell them hey there's this other matter that came up and I'm not sure what to do with it but I'm trying to figure it out but you know oftentimes there may not be processes documented on what to do with certain types of requests or some kind of vulnerability or etc but the worst thing to do with bad news or just bad problems in general is letting them sit there and simmer because honestly the more you try to sit on something and you don't really know what to do you're just going in circles it just ends up backfiring on you and maybe it wasn't the biggest issue but because you sat on it for a few days or maybe even a few hours that it became an even bigger issue because of the urgency that often comes with security events and just different requests that you may get so that's why my motto nowadays is if i'm trying to deal with something by myself first do i have the instructions or written documentation on the steps that i could be following to complete this task or get back to someone or deal with some issue or alert and if i don't then i will reach out to someone and i will directly ask them i no longer let things just sit and simmer for hours or days just because i know that things get really urgent and and in the beginning you may be thinking oh i don't want to bring this problem up to my teammates they're already so swamped well you're probably doing them a favor by telling them early so that they already know the issue at hand before it becomes you know blown up and maybe the executives or the senior leadership team knows but then your team doesn't know yet you know you always want to keep that in mind so don't try to deal with big problems by yourself especially if they have urgency or are dealing around some kind of security event okay next thing on this list is is tying your identity to your job especially in cybersecurity. so i know that this is something that a lot of people struggle with especially when we live in a society where the first thing people ask you about when they first meet you is what you do for a living but i think especially in my early career i tied basically a lot of my identity and self-worth into my job and my career so when things maybe weren't going as well at work or maybe i was just really stressed that's kind of when things went a little bit downhill just because my job was such a big part of my everyday life if something went wrong it would completely impact every other part of my life and that was very much how the first year of my career went. Um, I just spent a lot of time worrying about my job, what my coworkers thought of me, what my manager thought of me, how stressed I was about future presentations. And I think another facet of this is because my outside of work things also tie into this cybersecurity channel, a lot of my identity outside of work also ties into my work identity. So the lines are definitely a bit blurred there, but I definitely have gotten better with it over time. But I do wish that in the beginning of my career, I didn't try so hard to just accommodate everything and everyone. And I think another part of tying your identity to work also just brings in more room for imposter syndrome or basically if you're given a role like a security analyst but maybe you are fresh out of college like me or you're fresh out of the boot camp then coming into this role could definitely be a lot to live up to just because you may have been trying for a security job your whole entire life and then once you get there you're like oh i do not know as much as everyone else around me which is completely normal when you feel that way but you're holding yourself to such a high standard of hey i should know this but just knowing that you're continuously growing and learning in your career not just you get a job and you automatically know everything that it's never going to be that way so just making sure that you have the right expectations going into whatever job that you're going into whether it's cybersecurity or somewhere else in technology just remember that a job is just one part of your entire life and your identity not the only part next thing on this list is 
avoiding difficult conversations. I guess part of this does also go back to the previous point about not handling things for yourself and talking to people about them. But I think this is more so for the times when you think you need to speak up about something, whether you're advocating for your own career or, or maybe some acknowledgement around the work that you're doing, or maybe there's a problem with someone on your team and you need to talk to them, or maybe there's some career goals that you wanna bring up to your manager. Maybe you don't like the work that you're doing. Maybe you want to work on something else that maybe more aligned with your skill set and your goals and these are all difficult conversations to have especially when you are in your early career and i know that firsthand there are conversations that i should have had with my manager honestly right from the beginning not waited until the end of the year performance conversation where where they basically provide feedback for you as well as where they're planning on placing you in the next year on different projects but maybe those projects are not what you're interested in and it, they had no idea because you had never spoken up about them and they just assumed that you enjoyed working on it. I was definitely a very go with the flow kind of person and it was definitely a bit harder for me to bring up hey I want to work on this and even when I did say those things I definitely had problems advocating for myself and showing that I had the skill set to do these things especially because I was a bit quieter when I started my career something that haunts me I feel like to this day. I honestly think it's just the fact that first impressions speak very loudly and for me someone who is a bit quieter when you Kind of first meet me i guess you guys may or may not assume that based on me having this youtube channel and especially when it comes to meetings that kind of ends up making people think i'm quiet or that i'm not engaged in certain conversations even though i'm an avid note taker i take so many notes but i do think that avoiding difficult conversations is really just going to prolong the process because eventually it's going to blow up and you're going to tell someone that this isn't what you want to do not asking for the promotion that you think you deserve or not advocating for yourself when credit is due for a certain projects or deliverables that you're working on. So stand up for yourself and don't avoid those conversations because the more you want to avoid a conversation, the more important it probably is to your career and overall growth. All right, next thing on this list is not prioritizing my finances the way that I probably should have in my early career days. So when I was moving to New York City, if you guys remember, my rent was about 3,500 a month yeah i know it's a lot of money and for a one bedroom and i do think that i was just a bit disappointed in myself that that i wasn't able to correctly utilize my salary or my savings or try to invest in different things and i'm not saying that i went out and bought i don't know designer handbags or anything but it's more so the fact that i that i had no knowledge about how to invest i had no knowledge of where i should be putting my money and i wasn't even contributing to my 401k even though my company had a 401k match just because i you know never use a 401k and I always thought, well, if I had the money in my hand, then I could save it and blah, blah, blah. But obviously savings accounts and, and the fact that inflation eats away at your savings, those are all things I've learned, you know, basically out after college and I had the money to even try to manage. So I guess basically just being financially literate and finding resources on what to do with your paycheck because it's really like that quote, what doesn't get measured doesn't get managed. And this has nothing to do with cybersecurity at all. This is just something I think Every person in their early career should know because if you're going to be spending your important time at your full-time job and then making a paycheck at the end of the day, then you obviously want to take care of it because you're exchanging your time for this paycheck. And that is something that I'm really passionate about, making sure, making sure that people are aware of why you're working in the first place because it's not just about clocking in nine to five and doing your thing you also need to take care of yourself your family your future family if you want to buy a house in the future and i'm not saying money is going to solve all your problems but it's something important especially for a younger generation getting into the workforce definitely try to prioritize your finances and learn about all the different 401ks and hsas and roth ira accounts out there just to make sure that you have yourself in check because you never know when you're going to lose an income source honestly anything can happen and the pandemic has really showed that so just take care of yourself financially physically and mentally okay the next thing on this list is the idea that you can only stay in your field for the rest of your career so if you guys have been following my channel for a while now you know that i come from a software engineering background not necessarily a cybersecurity background but it just so happened that my first job out of college was in cybersecurity and I can share some videos down below on how that came to be. But basically when I got into cybersecurity, I was a little bit worried because, because I wasn't sure if I was boxing myself in. I had always been the type of person to want to try many different roles. Um, you guys probably already know this by now and not necessarily just many different roles in technology or cybersecurity, but just 
various different passion projects and hobbies that I have but that's definitely a big mistake to pigeonhole yourself in because if that's what you're assuming in your early career then you're only going to look for those types of roles like if you're going into data science then maybe you think I could only apply to data science or data engineering or data analyst roles but that's definitely not the case you can always pivot when you want to I know many people who have made career changes 5, 10, 20 years down the line and it is not a waste. You're not throwing away your career by switching to a different sector or a different field, especially for those of you who are watching that may be coming from different fields and maybe you want to break into cybersecurity. I know there's a lot of you guys like that on my channel who are trying to get your foot in the door in cybersecurity from a different sector or a different field. Just know that all of your past experiences are going to help you into cybersecurity just because it's such a cross-disciplinary field. They need people with various different types of backgrounds, experiences, education levels, everything. So maybe just a challenge for you guys next time you may be applying for different jobs or maybe just making a career change. Try to think outside of the box and be a bit creative on the types of roles that you apply to. Don't just apply for the ones that look like your previous job titles or previous job roles. Apply to the ones that actually make you feel excited and interested in thinking, oh, what is this about? Or, oh, what could I potentially be doing in this role? Even roles that you may not have heard about honestly probably exist this year compared to a few years ago. So Tech is always changing, even if you're going outside of the tech field. There's so many different sectors that you can go into, so you just never know where you could end up if you're a bit more creative about the job that you apply to. All right, next thing on this list is getting too in my head about bureaucracy. So this is something I struggled the most with, also again in my first year on the job. If you guys watched my previous videos, you know that I had previously worked at a financial services company, so they just happen to be more bureaucracy than other companies maybe and I think that's pretty much normal. Um, it's kind of like the dictionary definition of, of a corporate environment. So I do feel like if you're coming out of college or boot camp, it may be a bit new to you that there may be rules around who you should talk to, who you shouldn't talk to, um, teams that work better and the teams that don't work as well with whatever projects that you're dealing with and there just may end up being a lot of red tape that you may not be used to coming out of a college environment whereas in the workforce there may be some kind of etiquette when it comes to talking to certain people or whether you should email them or call them or message them there's just so many different things and I was getting way into my head about all these things and it honestly just causes a bit of analysis paralysis because you're like okay, well, I need to get this done by at the end of today, but the person I'm talking to is in a meeting and they're like a senior vice president or something. I don't know, you know, some senior role. And, and you're like, well, I should wait for them to get out of that meeting because I don't want to feel like I'm being rude because I'm just like an analyst or something or in my early career and I don't want to, I don't want to ping them about this or blah, blah, blah. And you're all just in your head about this, but it turns out they're probably gonna be in meetings for eight hours that day that's just how it happens and while i'm not saying to just constantly just ping bomb somebody um about hey when are you gonna get this over to me when are you gonna get this done like i'm definitely not saying to do that but i'm saying not to get so in your head about whether or not you should message someone or how to get your work done in this way or just being too calculated i think is sometimes a bad thing of course you just still be professional and and always come from a positive place and have requests not be unreasonable but i also think that just thinking too much about what you need to do is just going to end up wasting more time and cause unnecessary stress on you. All right, last thing on this list is something that I personally am a big advocate for and that is negotiating for your salary. Especially in your early career, you may think that maybe you just should be taking the salary that companies provide to you, but typically there is some room for negotiation, even though it may be stressful and daunting to think about that, which it definitely was in my early career. So even though this is something that I worked on in my early career, I do think it's a pretty common mistake that other people make, especially when they may think that they're too entry level to negotiate for a salary. So I think even just negotiating a salary of just a few thousand dollars even can make a pretty big difference in the long run depending on the cost of living in your area and where you plan on moving your career whether it's location or sector based and there are lots of helpful videos on youtube that can help you plan that negotiation conversation because it can definitely be very intimidating and very daunting when you are doing it for the first time but i do think it is very well worth it especially when you think about the long haul and just think about the fact that you're doing it for yourself and anyone else that you may be supporting whether it's family or any future plans or dreams that you may have all right so that's it for this video let me know if you guys found it helpful let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and if you have any other career mistakes to add to this list feel free to drop them in the comments as well I'm also having 20% off all my cybersecurity career resources from June 1st to 15th, linked in the description below. 
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. and hopefully it may change in the future um, to Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays probably towards the end of the year, but just a heads up, I may potentially be starting to post three videos a week towards the end of the year. Definitely not anytime soon, but you know. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.